I'm an unemployed bipolar 33 year old and I need to reach out to friends more. I realized maybe friendships are the cure to a bad life. In my most recent hospitalization at the psych ward in 2018, I had two friends visit me, John John and Jacob, and oh my god was I happy to see them. They're good friends man, friends who are there for you in the worst of times. I watched a really good video about the importance of friendship and you should watch it too, I'll link it in the description and at the end of this video. This is what Simon Sinek says. Our understanding of addiction largely comes from an experiment that was done, I think, in like the 50s or 60s, where they put a rat in a cage, and there was one thing of water where it was plain water, and one thing that was laced with drugs. Right. And in short order, the rat discovered the drug-laced uh, beverage and loved it, drank more and more until it killed itself. And our understanding of addiction largely comes from this study. Um, there was a guy named, uh, I think his name was Bruce Alexander, who, who said, hold on, it's flawed. The, the, whole, the whole study is flawed. Oh. Because rats like us are social animals. And we put a rat by itself in solitude. Of course it became an addict. But that's not what you're supposed to do with social animals. So he recreated the experiment where he put, like, first of all, he put lots of rats in the, in the cage. No way. So social, community. Uh, they put, like, wheels and mazes, and they were having kids and babies, and two waters, a plain water and, uh, and the, and the drug-laced water, and they could see from the data, they knew which ones, they, and they all tried enough of the drug-laced water to get addicted, right. but they didn't. Their, their taking in of the water declined, and they only drank the plain water, which starts to give evidence that, that if we have close friendships and when, if we live in community, perhaps we're less susceptible to all addiction. And, and I know that there's a lot being talked about about the addiction of social media, the addiction of cell phones, which is true, mm -hmm. which is true. It is a highly dopamine producing device and, and that it's causing loneliness. And I would argue that if we worked on the friendships and more important, if we taught our children how to be friends, that perhaps they are less uh, likely to get addicted. So when you talk about what's the global responsibility, yeah. we're, we're teaching how to, uh, people how to do everything. You know, we're finding the hacks for everything. The yeah. one thing we aren't doing is the old-fashioned, um, hard, slow thing of making friends. And I remember I'm thinking of one friend in particular, and I decided to say, like, I, I left his house, and I was like, I love you. And I remember watching him sort of, sort of be struck by it. Yeah. In very short order, maybe two or three times after I saw him, he started saying, I love you back. He started hugging me in a way that he's never hugged me. Um, I gave him a kiss on the cheek, he kissed me back. Uh, that's where the line is. Uh, <laughs> You'll find your friend will be sitting next to you laughing and going through the worst depression they've ever been through in their yeah. lives until you say, hey, is everything okay? What are you struggling with? And then they open up and you go, why didn't you tell me? They go, because I, I didn't want to burden you. I love you as my friend. And yeah. so that's, that's what I try to do more than, more than anything in the world. That's my greatest joy. That's such a common, that's a, such a common misunderstanding. Rich, I didn't want to burden you. I didn't want to bother you with my yeah. problems. And I think people don't realize that we don't build trust by offering help. We build trust by asking for it. And oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. say that again. We don't build trust by offering help. We build trust by asking for it. Damn. And why, why is that? Because it's your, it's your example. And you, I'm sure everyone in this room has had this experience where someone was in pain, didn't call you for fear of bothering you or yes. interrupting you, you're a busy person. Um, uh, and then you find out once they're okay. And, I, I, and uh, again, I'll just speak from personal experience. A friend of mine went through something. Uh, he wasn't completely out of it, but he was doing better. And I'm like, I haven't talked to him in a couple of weeks. And he sort of like slowly started to say, I've been struggling. Yeah, yeah. And I said, why didn't you call me? He says, I didn't want to bother you. And my immediate reaction was, you asshole. Um, <laughs> how dare you be so selfish to deny me the honor of being there for you in your time of, of showing up for you. And that's what it is. It's the incredible, that's when you know a friend is a friend, when you, you, it is an absolute honor to be there at the time they least want to call you. Do you think that women have a better grasp of friendship than men? 100%. So yeah, I do think women are better at it. I think women are less afraid to say I love you to their friends too. 
that the same thing is happening at work is happening in our relationships. So it used to be where we sort of had bowling leagues and we got our community from yes, there. Yes. We got our sense of belief from church. Work was the place we made our living. We had barbecues with our neighbors. And over time, those things have disappeared. And now we demand of our work that you be the place of, yes. of purpose. You be the place of community. Yeah. You be the place of my social life. Now you be the place that matches my politics. We're putting all this pressure on work to fulfill every desire I have. And we're doing the exact same thing in our relationships, which is we, we've seemed to abandon those outside places and we're asking of our partners to be everything all the time, always, which is an unreasonable and unfair standard to put on someone or be put on us. And if you think about all the mental health challenges that so many of us are facing today, whether it's uh, coping with stress, depression, anxiety, addiction, uh, even obsession with longevity, um, friendship is the ultimate biohack that literally fixes all those things. So as soon as I watched that this morning, I texted my friends. With a friend in town, I said, let's meet up this week. And with two friends who are far away, I said, let's hop on a call whenever you have time, like when you're commuting to work. I live a very isolated life. I live with my mom and I usually just stay at home watching YouTube and making YouTube videos. The most social thing in the day that I do is going to the gym and smiling and saying hi to people at the gym. I realize I really need to prioritize seeing friends in person or at least hopping on a call with them if they live far away. And on top of meeting friends, I need to meet more people. I'm too isolated. When I come back from Korea, I'm leaving in a few days, but after I get back, I'm thinking of trying out a running club that meets twice a week. If I end up hating the running club because of all the running, then I'll find some other social club to join. If left unchecked, I will stay at home for weeks and not meet anybody. That's what I've done since I've gotten shingles three and a half weeks ago almost healing, hopefully in time to ride the 14 hour plane ride, but I didn't step outside the house for weeks. But since being social and meeting friends is directly tied to our well-being, let's go out there and meet more people, even if it's uncomfortable to step outside or reach out. 1% better every day, baby. Ha ha ha. Muffin. <laughs>